hard cheese them. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to go over the parts of the neuron, the functional unit of the nervous system. Are you with me? Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Here is the basic neuron, and I want a basic description of each part of the neuron. And again, the function of neurons, they make up our nervous system, yes, and their job is to communicate with other neurons or to communicate with cells of the body. You got me? So as I described to you when we first started talking about the nervous system, the nervous system controls the minute-to-minute, second-to-second changes that occur in your body in an attempt to maintain homeostasis. You got me? So that, you'll get this. You'll get these little old ladies or guys, and they'll go, I got a blood pressure cuff measure at home, and I took it, and it was 127 over 84. And then 10 minutes later, I took it again, and it was 138 over 85. So my blood pressure is going up. Well, we know that your blood pressure changes minute to minute, second to second. And what changes it is the nervous system. Say yes. It's very good. So here we go. First of all, the biggest part of the neuron is called the cell body. And it contains all the components of a cell that we studied before. Golgi apparatus, tell me, mitochondria, stuff like that. It also contains a nucleus. And if you get this wrong, I'm marking your whole life wrong and half of your family's life wrong. What's in the nucleus? DNA. DNA. And what does DNA code for? That's very good. And the proteins that the neuron codes for primarily are these neuropeptides called neurotransmitters. Say yes. Did I go over this? No. The neurotransmitters that you should be familiar with and that you will come to know and love, number one, let's hear it for serotonin. All right, can we hear it for serotonin? Yay. No? Okay, good, yeah, woo, let's get a wave going. Okay, uh, norepinephrine, have you ever heard of that? Sounds like epinephrine. Epinephrine's the hormone, norepinephrine is the neurotransmitter. Nice, how about, how about this one? How about this one? Oh yeah, oh, 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 you like that, huh? Acetylcholine, you like that? Okay, gets good. Going to have a little acetylcholine tonight, huh? Uh, how about this? How about this one? You like this one? Dopamine. You like that? Those are the neurotransmitters that you're going to become um, familiar with. These two neurotransmitters, serotonin and norepinephrine, have a dramatic effect on mood. So there are drugs out there that affect the ability of a neuron to release um, these two neuro uh, neurotransmitters. So if you lack serotonin and norepinephrine, you can become depressed. If you have too much, then you become overly happy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, um, if we have time, I'll explain to you how manic depression occurs and how a clinical, true clinical depression occurs. All right. So, and it's very basic because what do I know about that stuff? Okay? All right, now watch. These little extensions of the cell body are called dendrites. And one cell body, one neuron cell body, can have many dendrites. And you write this down. Dendrites collect neural information.
and the neural information that they collect is in the form of a chemical. That chemical is a neurotransmitter, right? Then every cell body, every neuron has an extension off the cell body and it's only one and this is called the axon and the axon transmits neural information and it transmits its neural information in the form of an electrical impulse on a little electrical current and what produces that electrical current that Im electrical impulse my name is electrolytes right so the two systems that require electrolytes bringing you back to day number one are the cardiovascular system and the nervous system so anytime you have electrolyte disturbances you immediately worry about the heart and the nervous system say so, yeah and in the advanced class I'll explain how the electrolytes move to do this not in this class all right so the axon transmits that neural information by generating an electrical impulse or not generating an electrical impulse. So our brain works exactly like a computer. You know how they say a computer is either a one or a zero, the switch is either on or off. We work the same way. This neuron either produces an electrical impulse or it doesn't. Tell me you got that. If it does produce an electrical impulse, the electrical impulse begins at what's called the axon hillock. The axon hillock is where the electrical impulse is initiated. Who's following this? Okay, watch. Did I show you this? I want to get from here to there, right? From here to there. So here I go, ready? made it okay or I could do it this way which is quicker yeah the second one that did that was B right the jumpy so watch write this down when you're scared and you have to run or fight for your life do you want to activate your muscles like this or like that so watch write this down the axon of motor nerves and motor nerves initiate movement stimulate skeletal muscle to contract they have an insulation wrapped around them that insulation is called the myelin sheath in this picture, it looks like an orange hot dog bun with a little squirt of mustard. Huh? Yeah, and you got a blue hot dog. It's got like aspergillus on it or something. All right, so watch. Have you ever had your percent body fat measured? You have? How did they do it? Right. Mm -hmm. You know what it does? It sends in a little electrical current through your body. Listen up, because this is true. Muscle, like me, I have minus 12% body fat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Muscle has water. Water conducts electricity. Fat does not have water. Fat insulates you. Tell me you got that. So watch. You put your hand here, you put your hand here, it sends a current through your body and if less current shows up here, you have a greater percent body fat because fat does not conduct electricity. Did you follow that? Yeah. So this little myelin sheath is made of fat. So what does it do to the axon? It electrically insulates it. Tell me you're following this. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, they have a little dashed circle and it's blown up. You can see the little mustard and hot dog bun, the myelin sheath, 
And then you have a bare spot called the node of Ranvier. The node of Ranvier is where the electrical impulse in the axon is produced. And it appears that this electrical impulse hops from one node to the next. That process of that little electrical impulse hopping from one node to the next speeds up that electrical impulse, depending on how long the axon is, hundreds and thousands of times. And this is what allows your brain to stimulate muscles to run or fight for your life, right? You don't have to say, hold up, dude, wait, I got to think. Okay, now I'm ready to run. Do you follow this? So, and this name of the electrical impulse appearing to hop from one node to the next is called saltatory conduction. Saltatory conduction is found in motor nerves and it speeds up that electrical impulse. Say yes. From a clinical standpoint, this is also important. Have you ever heard of multiple sclerosis? You've heard of it. Do you know what it is? It's sclerosis multiple times. Watch. You have motor nerves in your brain, spinal cord, and that innervate your muscle. And if you recall, when we talked about the immune system, I explained to you that the immune system got a list of cells in your body, and the immune system was told, look, if you're on the list, if that's on the list, don't mess with it. You follow? When people with multiple sclerosis, they didn't get that message. And specifically, your, their immune system and people with multiple sclerosis view the myelin sheath as foreign. And it will attack it and destroy it. Tell me you got that. And it replaces it with scar tissue that has a lot of calcium in it. And calcium is hard. That's why, and it, because it occurs in the brain and spinal cord, in multiple locations, it's called multiple sclerosis. Say yes. Multiple sclerosis back in the day before they had MRI was a dumping diagnosis. You were weak, depressed, you got MS, right? Now they can definitively diagnose it with an MRI because it will light up. Those sclerotic areas, those calcified areas will show up in the brain and spinal cord. And there's Varying degrees of multiple sclerosis. Some you can last your entire lifetime with minimal changes. Others progress rapidly. I had a buddy I played baseball with, right? Great athlete. Gets up, hits the ball, rounded first, and all of a sudden he falls down. And he's tagged out, right? And I, he gets up and I go, uh, what'd you do? He goes, my legs just gave out. And I go, that ain't right. Then he was telling me he was holding a, a glass. The glass just dropped. And I go, dude, you need to have a check. They did an MRI, found out he had multiple sclerosis. Four years later, he was dead. So this can progress rapidly. Or, you know, people can have it for a long time and no big deal. Tell me you follow this. You got this. All right? Now watch. This is very important. When the electrical impulse is created in the axon hillock, it will jump from node to node. The bare spots, the nodes of Ranvier. The whole purpose of this electrical impulse is, better write this down, at the end of the axon is called the axon knob. Have you ever been called in a derogatory way an axon knob? You can use that now. Hey, you're an axon knob. And they don't even know that they're, you know, being talked down to. Well, hey, maybe that's a good thing. Hmm. Watch. What does DNA code for? Protein. What proteins does the DNA make inside a cell body of a neuron? The neurotransmitters that are made in the cell body are transported through the cytoplasm of the axon and then stored in the axon knob. Are you with me? The neurotransmitter is stored there. And that electrical impulse, when it travels down the axon, 
and it reaches the end of the axon knob, it will cause the release of that neurotransmitter. You're following me. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the basic structure of a neuron. There's a question on the final. Describe the basic structure of the neuron and the function of each part. Did I do that? Now I'm going to explain to you very, very rudimentarily how two neurons communicate. Are you following me? Then what I'm going to do for your listening and studying enjoyment, I'm going to explain to you how a neuron, a motor nerve, stimulates skeletal muscle to contract. Are you ready? Here we go. Write this down. Tattoo it someplace. If you get this tattooed, maybe even in just henna, I'll give you extra credit. <coughs> What's henna? You have henna? No, but I'll go buy it. What is henna? It's like a permanent marker, but not. Oh. Okay. Well, what did I tell you you put on there? This. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, watch. What I'm about to describe to you, write this down, is a synapse. Synapse. You got me? How many people have psychology? You learn this stuff. Am I right? For real? <laughs> okay, watch. That looks kind of weird. You guys have dirty minds, you know that. Is that better? <laughs> I'd love to tell you this story, but I just can't. <laughs> but you can pause it and then you can. No, I don't think so. Here we go. Ready? Ready? I don't know why that made me think of that. Can I tell you just real quick? Yes. Just real quick. Zoom. I don't know why I thought of that. Well, you guys are thinking dirty, that's why. <laughs> okay, watch, watch. This whole thing about what, what I just drew is called a synapse. And as you can clearly see, this is one neuron. This is neuron, neur, how do you spell it? Neur, neuron A, and then this would be neuron two. You got me? Mm -hmm. So as you can see, they don't touch, right? That's what a synapse is, where two neurons come together to communicate. You're following me. What's stored, and remember, axons transmit neural information. So if for neuron A, this is the axon. And for neuron 2, what collects neural information? The dendrite, right? So watch. What's stored in the end of the axon? The neurotransmitter, right? So watch. This here, axon A, this is called the presynaptic membrane. Who's with me? Yeah? And then the space between... Neuron A and neuron B, this space is called the synaptic cleft, right? You know this, guys? And then what would this be then? This would be the postsynaptic membrane. All right, now watch. This is going to be revolutionary. You, you, boom, get ready. Watch. 
when the neuron A produces the electrical impulse, that electrical impulse travels down the axon and over the axon knob. That act of that electrical impulse traveling over the axon knob causes the release of the neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. Are you following me? For that neurotransmitter to exert its effect on dend uh, you know, neuron 2 at the dendrite, you're not going to believe this. Ooh, I'm going to take this really slow because you've never heard this before. That neurotransmitter has to bind to a specific neurotransmitter receptor. Do you want me to take that a little slower? <laughs> Who's with me? Now watch. When that neurotransmitter binds to that receptor, it will either make that neuron 2 produce an electrical impulse or not produce an electrical impulse. Do you follow that? Guys, now watch. If this neurotransmitter, when it binds to the neurotransmitter receptor on that dendrite membrane, and it causes that neuron to produce an electrical impulse, this is important, as long as that neurotransmitter is bound there, and that neuron has ATP, it will continue to produce an electrical impulse. Do you always want this neuron producing an electrical impulse? So you have to have some way of removing that neurotransmitter from that receptor. Is there a way? Yes. Good, otherwise I wouldn't have done all this. One of the ways is in the synaptic cleft, there's a little Pac-Man that will come in and it will eat that neurotransmitter off that receptor. If you're a woman, it's Miss Pac-Man. Miss Pac-Man. That little, little Pac-Man is an enzyme and it's called monoamine oxidase. Have you ever heard of monoamine oxidase? Have you ever heard of monoamine oxidase inhibitors? Never? Well, you did today at Gateway Technical College. All right. Watch. There's another way. Another way. When that neurotransmitter is bound, it is reuptaked back into the presynaptic membrane. Let me say that again. It's reuptaked it. <laughs> it's brought back into the presynaptic membrane. Are you following me? Yeah. That's very good. Who, who, who's got that? Okay, now watch. And I'm just going to tell you this. You're not going to be responsible for it, but if you want to know why you need to know this, I'm going to explain this to you. Watch, and I'm not going to get all metaphysical on you, but uh, he, this is a fact. Thoughts are things. There's a saying in the Bible, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know what that means? If you think you're a loser, regardless of your circumstance, you're a loser. If you think you're a winner, regardless of your circumstances, you're a winner. Do you understand that? Your brain brings to life what you think. Do you follow that? So watch, there can be circumstances in your life that cause, that are sad, that can be depressing. Do you follow? And if those circumstances are either bad enough or you have a series of them, you can actually alter your brain chemistry. So you hear people say, I have a chemical imbalance, right? They're referring to neurotransmitters. And in people who are depressed, they simply don't release enough serotonin and norepinephrine. And that causes clinical depression. That's clinical depression. When you say to them, snap out of it, they can't snap out of it. Do you understand that? So just real quick, 
about 20 years ago, I was doing some studies. And one of the things I had to do is I was doing a study on depression. We were testing newer drugs. Uh, Effexor, have you heard of that? Yeah. Right? I did the clinical trials on Effexor, right? So anyways, one of the things that I had to do is recruit subjects. So if people came in to see the doctor and they said, oh, I'm, I'm here because I'm depressed, then like, ding, you got to contact Timmy. So they would contact me and then I would have them answer 36 questions. Have you ever heard of the SF36? Have, never? Yeah. It's a psychometric tool that looks at anxiety, depression, and somatoform. Somatoform is you got a bad back, but you really don't have a bad back. It's all in your head, right? And th this is true. So one thing I learned about people, especially you know people nowadays, is it's not that they don't want to feel sad or they don't want to feel happy. They don't want to feel anything. Right? They want to go through life what you guys look like at about quarter after eight. <laughs> and I get it, you work all day. So um, I asked this lady, I said, I sat her down and I'm talking to it, and I said, I understand you're depressed. Could you tell me a little bit about it? And she goes, well, my mother died. And I said, when did your mom pass away? And she said, last week. And I couldn't help myself. I just couldn't. I said, you're supposed to be depressed. That's sad, right? A year from now, you come back and you're still depressed. You got a problem. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized that people, even when they're supposed to be sad, they don't want to feel sad. Watch, write this down. Life has ups and downs. Look what I learned in AMP. Now watch. I told you about uh, resting bitch face lady. <laughs> Did I tell you about her? No. She sat right there. It's not you. Oh yeah. Right? I still don't remember her name. <laughs> her last name was Payne, and it was so funny. <laughs> Anyways, she would come into class, and I'd go, "What's wrong with you?" And she goes, "Nothing." And she goes, "Oh, I have resting bitch face." <laughs> So I work with this lady at the company I work at, right? And this lady was a bitch. I'd walk by her desk, right? And she'd be like, I'm like damn lady, I'm not even kidding. Like mean mugging me and I have never said a word to this lady in my life. So she's, I'm working there, she's working there for like three years. And then one day I'm walking by, I'm like kind of like this, right? And she's like, hi Tim. So I turn around and I go, hi, Ann. She goes, I know, I know. I was a bitch. And she admits <laughs> it, right? I swear to you. And she goes, I'm on Prozac. And I'm like, I cannot believe the transformation that occurred in that lady. It was unbelievable. This lady was funny. She was engaging. She was interesting to talk to. I mean, it was amazing, right? And I've been there 24 years. She was the only one that gives me a Christmas present every year. She was just so nice. But anyways, she's like, I just don't like being on medicine, you know, and stuff. I'm like, I get it. So she'd, she'd always try to go off of it. And I could always tell when she was off. I'd walk by and she'd be like, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> so I just keep walking a little bit. I go talk to somebody else. I come back and I just, I just walk, say it as I'm walking by. And I said, Ann, you need, really need to be on it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so she started taking it. And I, like, I have never seen a transformation in a human being like that. Here's my point. Here's my point. Watch. Your goal in life and my goal in life is the same goal. It is to be happy and content, right? And if you can achieve that by taking a little medicine, I say God bless you. Do you understand that? And people say, oh, you know, I don't want to be addicted to a med <laughs> What a dumbass you are. If I could find a pill that was going to make me feel better about life, you're damn right I'm going to take it. What's wrong with that, right? Because 
most people, if you look, I don't care where they are in their station of life, in a lot of ways they're miserable. Do you understand that? And life is very fast paced and it's very easy to fall into that trap, right? More bad things happen to you during the day than good things. And if you keep summing those things up, you know, in a couple of years you're just, you know, sitting in a corner rocking back and forth. And there's, there's nothing wrong with it. And these drugs have gotten a lot better. And here's the thing, you would not, I could not believe the people who were taking those drugs. Like, I, I don't care who they were. They could be executives or they could be working, you know, uh, in the factory. But it really made a difference in the, the lives for a lot of those people. But here's my point. Now watch. <clears throat> Back in the 60s, the only thing they could give you was basically tranquilizers where if there was something wrong with you, this is what you do. You're like, <laughs> right? Or they would use electroconvulsive therapy. You ever see one flew yeah. over to the cuckoo's nest? Yeah. They would do that. They didn't have medicines to treat this. Then they came up with a drug called Nardil. Nardil inhibits the Pac-Man. Now watch. In depression, you don't release enough neurotransmitter. So do you want that Pac-Man eating off the neurotransmitter that you have? No. The problem was it gave you a really nasty side effects. Like you would get ticks and like, like that. It was called tardive dyskinesia. And that made you depressed because you got that. <laughs> but in the 80s, they came up with other drugs that prevented the reuptake didine of the neurotransmitter. Those are your Prozac, your Effexor, right? Your Paxil. They're called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors or selective norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Have you ever heard of them? SSRIs? That's how they work, by preventing the reuptake of those. Now, if you ever watch the commercials, they'll always say, if you're taking an MAOI, talk to your doctor before starting Prozac. Because if you inhibit both ways, then you don't ever get that neurotransmitter released, and these affect mood. So you get your leg chopped off, and you're like, <laughs> that's OK. You got another one. So that's why they'll always ask you about that. They'll always say, are you taking an MAOI? And you're like, I don't know. And then they'll say, they'll get a list of the medications. But these drugs, these selective serotonin reuptake and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, they've proven very effective. And here's the problem too, watch, and I explained this, and I explained this at, when we started this. The nervous system doesn't have a lymphatic system. So the environment of the brain and spinal cord has to be tightly controlled. That means to get medicine from the blood into the central nervous system is a task. And it takes a long time. That's why when you're taking these medicines, you don't pop a Prozac, you're like, hey, <laughs> right? It takes months to start building up a therapeutic level where you will notice an effect. But again, People, we're Americans, and we want it right now. You pop up, hey, I should feel better, and I don't. That's why I like Xanax. What's that? That's why I like Xanax so much. Yeah. You know that Xanax is the number one drug for people going into rehab for? Mm -hmm. I believe it. Yeah. Because Xanax just kind of takes the edge off things, you know? Hey, hey. <laughs> Can I tell you, I've never tried a narcotic in my life. I know that's hard to believe. Never had a narcotic, Xanax, nothing like that, right? You know what I do? I just drink till I'm just basically bombed. <laughs> what? Tell me you got that. Okay, now watch. Uh, Adderall? How many people are on Adderall right now? Are you really? And you still fall asleep in my class? <laughs> no, maybe you're just concentrating <laughs> with your eyes closed. <laughs> Watch. Adderall is given for people with ADHD because those people constantly need stimulation, right? They're doing something and like, oh, there's a squirrel. I feel like that's me. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's me? <laughs> Can I tell you? All day long, I own that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you? 
I, I absolutely agree with you. And I uh, look, I, I'm not going to, I'm gonna, going to admit it, but here's the thing, and there's no getting around it, right? People who uh, are kind of like ADHD a little out there, they tend to be a little more creative than other people. And I think when you start giving people Ritalin and stuff like that, yeah. that uh, I don't think that's the best thing. Like if I would have, if they would have had Ritalin back when I was a kid, I'd have been on like, you know, I'd be sitting in the back of him, right? Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, watch, Adderall works, it's speed. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why one of the things the doctor will always do when they're prescribing it is when they come in for the visits, they will always get your weight because amphetamines suppress your appetite. Back in the 70s, they were big for weight loss, right? So, and women know it. I'm just saying, you know, women, the body image and everything. So, doc, I got ADHD. I forget my keys. I don't study. You know, there's a squirrel, right? <laughs> and they know the questions. They know the things to say to the doctor to get the, get the Adderall so that they can lose weight. But how it works with people who have ADHD is that it stimulates the brain right so that you don't need external stimulus so that you are able to focus so so four years ago i was talking to my doc right and i'm like man i just don't have enough time in the day to do stuff and he goes tim do you want to try a little adderall uh. i'm like i don't know he goes i took it right i took it when i was studying in medical school and i sat there and I was reading a textbook, and I started at like 9 o'clock in the morning. And then I looked up, and it was 3 o'clock in the morning. So I had been doing this for like 16 hours. I'm like, damn. So anyways, he said, here, I'll give you like 10 milligrams of this stuff. So I had a busy day on Saturday. I had like a stack of tests to grade. I'm like, oh, let's try it. <laughs> so I popped 10 milligrams at about 11 o'clock in the morning, right? At noon, I sat down. And I am just knocking these things out, right? I'm not peeing. I'm not getting anything to drink. I'm not getting up, right? I'm not even moving. I'm just like, okay, boom, boom. I look up. It's like 9.30 at night. I'm like, where did that go? But the problem is, is that the next day, you're like, my feet hurt. I'm like, damn, that ain't right. And I, I'm like, forget it. It was just, it, I'm, I got enough energy. Right? I didn't need that. But that's basically how Adderall works. So simplistically, it will stimulate your brain so that you don't seek external stimuli, and that gives you the ability to focus. Uh, real quick, Ritalin, watch. Ritalin can be used in kids for ADHD, but it can also be used in adults for depression. Do you know how? Watch. Kids who have ADHD, they release too much neurotransmitter, right? So they're, right? <laughs> so Ritalin increases the release of neurotransmitter and you get what's called fatigue at the synapse. You simply don't, can't produce enough neurotransmitter to keep up with this release. So the, you can't produce anymore so that neuron doesn't fire anymore. That's why if you take too much Ritalin as a kid, they're like, you follow? And what's the problem in people with depression? When people with depression, they don't release enough. So Ritalin increases that release. That's how it can be used to treat depression in adults and ADHD in kids. And here's the thing, watch. <laughs> when, I think I told you this, right? I'm left-handed. I have dyslexia, right? So that's why, like, I'll look at a word, I'm like, is that right? So this is back in the 60s. So I'm in, like, third grade, and the teacher thought I was retarded, right? Because I couldn't spell, you know? So she talked to the administration, and, you know, my mom, what does she know? She's taking the, the, the words of this, this teacher and the administrator. We think your son is special. So for four months of the third grade, the little short yellow bus picked me up. You think, it's a God's honest truth. Now watch. 
Watch how smart I am. When I went to these classes and I looked around, I'm like, these kids are retarded. But watch. I'm in this class, so they think I'm retarded. And I said, I'm never going to tell anybody this. I am going to bust my ass. I don't care what I have to do. I'm never. I'm going to go to my grave with that one. And I'm, I'm never going to use that as, as an excuse. And I never did. Because I thought, I don't, want, I don't want people to say that about me. Right? Would you want the people to say that about you? Right. But I see, I had this one kid when I was teaching class at, in Chicago. And he goes, hey, Tim, I'm taking your physiology class in the spring. I go, good, I hope you learn something. He goes, can I show you this letter? So I read it, right, and I go, I hand it back to him. I go, are you retarded? He goes, I'm not retarded. I go, what does this letter mean to me? Well, it just takes me longer to learn stuff. I said, well, let me give you an example. If a student has to study 10 hours for my test, you have to study 20. Yeah. I said, well, do me a favor. Take this letter, fold it really nice, and shove it up your ass and study 20 hours. What's wrong with you? What is wrong with you? And I sat him down. I said, you go to your grave with that one, buddy. You study 20 hours. And he, he was looking for a free ride. And I'm like, no way. That's, that's my speech on that stuff. People, yeah. You know, to be honest, I don't remember. I think my mom finally stepped in, you know, because they were like, wait, you know how to do this stuff. I'm like, yeah. And, you know, my mom had seven kids. It was back in the 60s, right? You know, you didn't question teachers and administrators. But that's what I mean. When a teacher says that, oh, your kid needs Ritalin, wait a minute, wait a minute, who are you? Who are you, right? And a lot of teachers use Ritalin as a way of just controlling bad behavior in a classroom. I'm thinking about using it, too. <laughs> have like a little candy dish of Ritalin when you walk in. But I don't know. I mean, look, you can take that for what it's worth. That was my little uh, uh, personal opinion. But my, my point is is that I think people look for, um, look for excuses. Now, are there kids out there who really have ADHD? And that need, absolutely. But I personally believe that a lot of it is um, that parents aren't being parents and they're not kicking the kid's ass when they need to have a good ass kicking. That's it. And God invented the ass. There's no vital organs around that thing. And you slap that thing, man, and it stings. And kids remember that, right? And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I, there wasn't an ass beating I didn't deserve when I look back on it, you know. And I'm a productive member of society for the most part. And... I think we've gotten away with that. And if you look, just real quick, and then we're moving on. Every other culture who's been around for thousands and thousands of years, thousands and thousands of years, still incorporate corporal punishment into raising children. And we, who have been around for 300 years, right, we don't think that's a good idea, right? And then you see some of the behavior. It's unbelievable. There are no, no, there's no accountability anymore. That Columbine thing? Right? We didn't know they had guns in their bedroom. That's right. They didn't want to know. Right? I told my son, your bedroom, I go in at any time I want. Do you understand? I can look around any time I want. I said, when you write out the check for the mortgage every month, then you can say, Dad, don't go in the middle. Okay. Okay. Till then, shut up. And you know, you know what I understand? To me, I simplify everything, right? This is me and my son. It's never going to be like this until I decide. Do you understand? I told him, I'm always going to be your superior. Always. Even if I'm like, right? I'm still your superior. I decide when I'm going to treat you like a man. You don't make that decision. I decide that. And kids go, oh, I'll be his friend. You've got enough friends. I'm your dad. Boom. And... We've gotten away from that, and that's a problem. Some of these students, the way they talk to me, I'm, I'm, I'm actually speechless, if you can believe it. I would never do that, ever. I would never do that, because I wasn't raised that way. Kids are, I'm like, 
the lady I work with, right, she goes, Tim, you know, I just, she runs this uh, quality department. She goes, you know, I ask these people to do this stuff, and they just won't do it. I said, wait a minute. When was doing what your boss said optional? When did that, did I miss that memo? When did that come out? I was taught that if your boss says to do that, you do it. And then you wonder why you see all these people from other countries who are doctors. And they're willing to pay that price. The education of Gateway Technical College students continues. Okay, I'm done with that. Tell me you followed that. You got that? Okay, here we go. Watch. What? I told her you had gone Can I tell you something just real quick and then I'll get back on it? <laughs> no. Last night I'm teaching my class in um, Kenosha. And I, I looked at the students, like it was like like quarter after eight, right? And I stopped and I said, Tell me what time you had to get up this morning. And people were saying four o'clock, four thirty. I get it. That's why I record it. Do you understand? I know that, like, after break, you guys have pretty much checked out. That you're just here in body. You know what I mean? I get it, right? But it is what it is, right? And if they make you do it, they make you do it. Say, so, yeah. But that's why I record it because I know that you're not all there most days. I got to get next semester, I'm going to get a GoPro and then just <laughs> teach my class and then I'm going to record it and then I'm going to upload it with the video and then you watch <laughs> the people. <laughs> it's a hard thing. I get it. Okay. Let me just do this. Um, can I, I have to go over this. Let me do this. Um, I want to go over the, um, the ear and the eye. Say yeah. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, I'll give you a quick break. I'll go over the ear, give you a break, then come back over the eye, and then I'm going to explain to you how a nerve innervates a uh, muscle and makes it contract. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. <coughs> what? What did I miss? Did I miss a question? I think you might have. What? Um, describe the basic structures of the brain and the basic functions of each part of the brain. Oh, oh I, I thought we did that last time. We didn't do that. Okay, let me do that then. Let me do that. Just so you know, there's a video on that. Okay. You don't have to go over. I, I do want to go over uh, some of it. All right? Come on. Let me just do it. What? All right, here we go. Okay, there's a question on the final. Describe the basic structure and function of the brain, the basic major parts of the brain. Say yeah. Okay, so here we go. Okay, this is your brain. So watch, this is your brain, and that's a drug. Your brain is on drugs. Okay. All right, watch. The lower portions of the brain are the basic biological functions. How many people know Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Tell me from the lowest part to the upper part, what are they? Real quick, come on. I mean, I don't know them that well. Is someone like safety? Security. Isn't that the no, what's at the bottom? What's at the bottom? No. If you don't have oxygen, do you care whether you're safe? <laughs> so you have um, physiological needs, right? Then you have biological needs. Physiological, you need air, right? Right? You got to have air and, you know, other stuff. Then the biological needs, watch, and I explain this to you. When you have to pee or poop, 
Nothing else matters, right? You don't care, right? You don't care if you wreck your car, right? I gotta pee. <laughs> then after you've met your physiologic, your biologic, then there's the safety needs, right? You gotta have a place to sleep. You follow? And then what's the other ones? Well, who cares? Then you become self-actualized. You're like, you know, on a cloud, right? But watch. As you move up the brain, from the brain stem up until the higher areas of the brain, those higher areas become much more complex. And the functions become much more of the you know, the self-actualization type things, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is that the brain stem is basically for your physiologic and biologic needs. So an alligator has a medulla. You got me? What makes us unique is this, is the cerebral cortex. So this area right here. You got me? And what really makes us human is the frontal lobe of the cerebral cortex. This is the seat of our humanity. This allows us to understand things. We're the only species that knows at some point we're going to die. Like a fly, right? They're flying around, hey, all right, I'm here. I'm gonna throw up on some coleslaw, right? <laughs> And then they're, you're driving a car, and then, bam, that fly hit, and then, boom. And that fly did not know it was going to die. It was having a good day. And then, bam, it died. Right? We know that at some point we're going to die. So I pose the question. If you knew, if you wanted to, and you could find out when you were going to die, would you want to know? No. Right? Who would want? I wouldn't want to know that. Right? And if I knew I was going to die at some point, I would read the textbook a lot more. Okay, so let's start from the lower portions of the brain, basic biological functions, say yeah, and move upwards. The lowest portion of the brain stem is your medulla. What is your medulla control? Don't all say it at once. Breathing, right? We learned about that, right? Breathing, what else? Come on. Heart rate and blood pressure. There you are. That's basic. The pons is involved with breathing. It's also involved with sensory interpretation, right? Tactile stimulation. The other thing that the pons has is what's called the reticular activating system. The reticular activating system is part of the brain that tells you to go to sleep and tells you to wake up. Now watch, watch. When do you go to sleep? Oh, okay. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. Most people go to sleep at night. <laughs> I know. And listen up, because this is true. If you work third shift for 15 years, you will take five years off your life. It is abnormal for a human being to be up at night. You got me? So watch. There's a little gland. It's right here. It's called the pineal gland. And the pineal gland releases a hormone called melatonin. Now watch. Watch. When do you get melatonin released? When you close your eyes and fall asleep, sleep, sleep. Okay. So watch. That's why people, when they work their shift, it's light out and they have a hard time. So if you want to sleep good at night, the last thing you do is fall asleep with your TV on. You make your room as dark as possible and you will sleep better. It's that simple. Remove all the distractions. No one should have a TV in their bedroom. How many people got a TV in their bedroom and they fall asleep with it on? There you have it. And you're not, you, you don't sleep well. You don't. 
You make that room as dark as possible. So the reticular activating system, when it is turned on by melatonin, it does a couple of things. Number one, it will partially paralyze your skeletal muscle. So when you're in that REM sleep, that restorative sleep, your muscles are partially paralyzed. So when you are dreaming, you will, if they weren't partially paralyzed, you would act out your dreams, right? So in people who sleepwalk, there is a disconnect between the reticular activating system partially paralyzing the muscles. It, they don't. As a result, you dream, and now you walk around, hey, I'm making a salad. Do you follow? That's why when a monster is chasing you in your dream and you're running, it feels like you're running in jello because that disconnect between what your brain thinks you're doing and your body's actually doing, it doesn't make sense. So the brain interprets it that you can't move right. Say yeah. Okay. Then the midbrain, that's really not on the the final, you don't have to know about that, but just let me tell you, that's kind of the seat of our emotions a little bit. This is where you get pissed off, angry, you love somebody, you hate somebody. And then whoever said there's a thin line between love and hate, man, they were right on. You got me? Then do I really have to go over the hypothalamus? Please, do I? No. And then above the hypothalamus? No. Is the thalamus. The thalamus is kind of like the gatekeeper of our senses. Watch. If you felt everything, all your senses became conscious, you would go insane. So the thalamus allows only certain sensory stimuli to become conscious. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Watch. You're in a group of the 300 people there, and you hear, Megan, you immediately, Megan, you immediately attend to that because that's important to you. Do you follow that? So another example, you're driving home and you always notice the same make and model car that you drive, right? All the time because you're thinking that person's got to be cool too. <laughs> now, let me give you an example of uh, the opposite. What I'm talking to you right now about the thalamus, that's not going to reach consciousness. <laughs> And then students, when they go, like you go into advance and you have another teacher in advance, you go, did you go over the functions of the thalamus? They're like, no, we went over, never went over that. <laughs> and you believe that we never went over it because I don't remember that. Say yeah. Okay. So, and really what the thalamus does is prevents you from going insane from all the sensory stimuli. It, you will only attend to what you believe to be important. You got me? If you could feel all of the fibers and all of your clothes, you'd be like, ah! ah. You got me? And, um, yeah, that's nice. Now, that's why they say that uh, when people they've seen a, like a they've seen a murder or something like that and they can't remember anything, they can actually try to like try to hypnotize them. You remember everything that you see, you just can't recall it. Oh, that like uh, regression therapy. Something. Yeah, they're gonna talk to you when you were twelve years old. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure I actually buy that. You know, I, you know, I always wondered how hip, hypnotizing works. How you, like, you know what I mean? I always wondered about that. I think that's cool. So that's what I'm gonna do, right? When you fill out the course evaluations, you're getting very sleepy. <laughs> okay, one last thing, and you can take a break. The corpus callosum is actually kind of a unique thing. It is made up of a ton of axons, and its purpose is that it allows the hemispheres of the brain to communicate from one, uh, to one another. In the advanced class, I become a little more advanced and get into some of the unique features of the right and left side of the brain. So to be kind of a complete person, you have to be able to integrate both the right and left hemispheres of your brain. 
But in some people, the hemispheres of the brain in this corpus callosum, you get this massive neural activity and you have what's called epilepsy and you get what are called grand mal seizures. And in some people who are refractory to these anti-seizure medications, they have to actually go in and sever that corpus callosum. And that's, it, it's, it's really weird. But anyways, now watch. If a person has a seizure because of the increased activity of the brain, the neurons firing, what do you think anti-seizure medicine does? Just spitballing here, people. What do you think it does? What does it do? Or it decreases the brain's electrical activity. So what's the most common side effect of anti-seizure medication? They're, they sleep all the time. That's one of the side effects. So that could explain it. You guys have seizures? <laughs> all right, take a break, okay? Just so you know, oh, before you take a break, so I know I did say this, there's a video called The Parts of the Brain and Their Functions. Write that down. Are you going to write that down? I wrote it down? Who wrote that down? You already watched it? The audio was bad. It was bad. I was going to say the audio was bad. It actually says on the video, poor audio. And then if you look, if you blow up the screen to maybe like 150%, it says parentheses, poor audio, too bad. Hey, did I do that in this class where I asked you to get in groups and figure out the, uh, the RH? Yeah. 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 How did you feel about that? Well, you just told us that we all did good, but we didn't review it. I didn't go over it? No. Yeah, I mean, no, I yeah, went but over not it. our answers. No, we but. You said we all did good. I didn't go over it and explain to you why uh, AB negative you, or AB. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you explained it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought we would get our, well, our answers back. Oh, I, I do have them. But I'm not giving them back to you. Because I said. <laughs> that is a good reason. I think Celeste wants to fight. All the time. See? <laughs> Brittany, she looks like she's ready to fight. She's got that leather jacket on. She's going to rumble. She's probably got a switchblade in her pocket. Okay, here we go. Let's go over a few more things and then you can ambulate. Don't hate. Ambulate. I like mashed potatoes. So I, I make them for Thanksgiving, right? And then I don't even use milk. I just use all butter. And then I take a, a egg beater and then I beat them up so they're like, just like whipped. Don't hate. Yeah, Ambulate. I mean, you got bacon, so okay. It's a thrill. <laughs> it's a thrill. Go ahead. That was a thrill. You got bacon, so. Okay, here we go. We're going to do something. What are we going to do? I don't know, but your screen's on. I don't care. Everyone just kind of take turns walking around. <laughs> I hate me, too. Here we go. Basic overview of the... Ear and eye. I got to do it. Look. There's a video on the ear and the eye, too, just so you know. I know. You guys don't even look at the videos, either. That ear and eye video, it's got a minus 17 views.
Okay, here we go. I think I explained this to you, but I'm going to explain to you again. Why you got two ears and not just one big one? Yeah, you know, because you can you can see them through your ear. Watch. Sound waves travel much slower than light waves. So if a killer's over there and they say, "Hey, I'm gonna kill you," it comes into this ear first, resonates through the skull bones, and comes into this ear just a split second slower. And your brain, your parietal lobe, is able to triangulate that direction and determine direction of sound. That's why you got. Two ears and not just one big one. All right? So, um, again, very general, very basic. Here we go. The ear is divided into three parts. It's divided into the external ear. Then you have the middle ear. And then you have the inner ear. The external ear consists of the pinea or oracle. And the function of the pinea or oracle is to... Um, funnel sound waves into the external auditory meatus or the external ear. Now, the external ear is lined with skin, but it does not have sweat glands. It has modified sweat glands that produce earwax. And the function of earwax is to protect like, I don't know, like a bee or something from getting in there. <coughs> then if you had a bee in your ear, buzz, buzz, buzz. Did you ever ever get a beer in your ear? A beer in your ear. <laughs> you know where my mind is. <laughs> like when I get home, I get excited walking in that door because I know I'm going to put my coat down and my bag down and I'm just going to pop open a cold one, man. I just suck that thing down. My life is good. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> and I sit there on my couch and I drink it and I rock back and forth. That's all I need. That's all I need. My cell phone. That's all I need. And these glasses. That's all I need. You know where that's from? The jerk. Yep, the jerk. You never saw The Jerk? <laughs> you got to watch that movie. You guys have not lived. There's a dude in my advanced class who's not seen Terminator. I'm like, dude, how, how does a dude not watch Terminator? Maybe You've seen it like 12 maybe times, maybe right? Oh, yeah. yeah, and if it's on, right, Joe? Tim, right, if it's on, you got to watch it. You have to watch it, right? Like Full Metal Jacket. If it's on, dude, you're watching it, right? You don't care if it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, it's on. I'm watching it. Okay, here we go. We're not doing good tonight, are we? <laughs> you know whose fault it is? Tamaya. She asked me all these questions before to start a class. Totally jacked with my cheek. Okay, here we go. External ear. No more bees. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, modified sweat glands that secrete uh, earwax. Listen up, because this is true. Your ears are self-cleaning. The skin actually sloughs off from the inner part to the outer part to actually self-clean your ear. So when you go in there with a Q-tip and start drilling down, you are smashing that earwax, and they will no longer be self-cleaning. Have you ever seen someone get a, their ears irrigated? Yeah. yeah, I did this old lady's, I irrigated her ears, and a Buick came out. <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. And the weird thing, I don't know how long it was sitting in there, but it was sitting on 30s. <laughs> it was beating hard. <laughs> so stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is so stupid. Fuck. This class is over anyways, man. <laughs> Nothing's happening. We talked about, we just learned about the 30s. 
<laughs> oh god. I don't know if I ever did that, but like, I, you know how I would give you a bling? Back in the day, I would like give you like a one spoke rim if you did really good. Oh, who cares? All right, here we go. We're going to do this and then you can ambulate. Will you watch the videos? Yes. That's why everybody else Well, watch. You notice I was digging. I'm in my computer, so I didn't watch them leave, so they didn't feel like they had a minute excuse. You could have made your getaway too, but you didn't. All right, uh, watch the video. Will you watch the video? Yes. What? Look, I'm not going over the ear and the eye. There's a video for it and the parts of the brain. Do you understand? Yes. Listen up, because this is true. When we when we come back, right? That will be what Tuesday. Yeah. I'm gonna I'll go over how a motor nerve stimulates muscles to contract, and with that time, in that time, I'm gonna explain to you the structure of skeletal muscle. Do you follow that? Yes. Yes. Okay, and then um, I'm going to go over a, a bone physiology. Say yes. yes. And uh, then I'm going to go over a male and female reper Wait. Yeah. 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 Okay, wait. No, you're going to learn about babies and fetal circulation next semester. So we're going to have the 28th. Uh, and the fifth, and uh, that's it. Yeah, that's our last question. Okay. All right, and then if you want to, the fifth, you can come in. Uh, we can have a review that uh, day. And then um, the uh, uh, Thursday will be your last uh, lab day. If you want to use some of, uh, some of that uh, Tuesday for lab, uh, that's fine. And then, uh, do you want to? I'm going to get you guys some pizza on uh, one of these days. Do you want it on Thursday or Tuesday? Thursday. Thursday. Thir okay, Thursday. Okay. And then um, that'll be that. Your, listen up, your uh, oral, oral final will be the 12th, and your lab final will be the 14th. Okay. Shuffle, pick three, bam. Say yeah. yeah. Uh, if you want to take a multiple guest final, uh, there's one available for you too. Okay. Say yeah. Did you get it? I didn't do that great on this quiz. How much is it? Is it affecting your? It won't affect your uh, grade at all. If you didn't do better, then. If, if it doesn't improve your grade, I'm not going to add it. That's so disappointing. You're slipping. Come on. This is not the time to slip. you got to get it together. You've got to keep it together. You understand? Keep it together. you got three damn weeks. Come on. You can do anything for three weeks. Keep it together. I'm trying. I know. I know. It's just hard. I'm trying. Keep it together. Don't fuck up now. Honestly. Yeah. I know. I just gotta figure out how to do school. Don't worry. Yeah, you guys too. Yeah, have a nice Thanksgiving. I forgot about that. Yeah, we're not gonna see you on Thursday, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. Okay. Hey, have a good dub. A nice holiday. All right, enjoy yourself. Don't worry about it. Get, get through this now. Do you understand? Don't fuck around now. You're so close. So it's going to be... What? I laugh when I get... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't, don't fuck, fuck off. Oh, okay. You're just close. Why are you doing that? I'm just I think it's just like I'm just overstressing myself. Well then don't overstress yourself. Enjoy your uh, holiday, relax and then get don't then work and then just get back at it. You got three fucking weeks.
Don't disappoint me. Oh, well, I gotta now. I gotta edit that. Well, I'm not even putting this up anyway. <laughs> we didn't do very good tonight. So the um, so the um, final is gonna be exactly like the midterm, right? 